camping trips. We went on canoe camping trips a number of different, you know, many different times. And Mary reminded me of some of the, the great things that I had done over the years. We took uh, Colin, my son, backpacking when he was probably oh, about seven or eight at the time. And we went down the Manistee River Trail and hiked up the Manistee River Trail and to where we had staged a canoe and then floated down. But along the hike there, we had stopped along a bank and um, told Colin to be very careful. There was a steep embankment there, but we were taking a break and kind of got off thinking about, uh, you know, chatting about things and looking at birds and so forth. And where's Colin? Couldn't find him. And he had fallen down the embankment, which we didn't figure out until he <laughs> crawled up over the top, back up to the top, you know, looking all bruised and battered and dirty from having fallen down this bank. We never even knew it. <laughs> Which is um, good that I didn't know it. <laughs> and another time I was hiking with Emily on Man South Manitou Island and we got caught out in a thunderstorm, which came, the core of the storm was right over us. And we took refuge in the only shelters that were there. I threw a tarp over a picnic table. Um, Steve Hicks would know exactly where I was. It was this old schoolhouse area, but that was locked. And Emily didn't want to be under the picnic table, which was probably smart because it turned into a lake. So she took refuge in a nearby outhouse that stunk to high heaven while we <laughs> basically just sat there and quaked while this storm was blasting all around us. After which Emily wanted out. You know, so we left South Manitou a day early. <laughs> hiked back to the ferry and got out. But to set the stage for this uh, canoe trip that we took in Algonquin, um, Brad and I had gone on a couple of other trips with the canoe. And the year before this, we went to Craig Lake State Park, um, west of Marquette in the Upper Peninsula, and had a nice time out there. But while we were out there, we, found, we saw, we did a, a portage to a nearby lake, and it was, we had this old canoe that I still have. It was my dad's old fishing canoe. It's an aluminum 17-footer, and it's about 80 pounds. So it's a, a, quite a load to carry on a long portage. Mm -hmm. And while we were portaging, we, we uh, noticed that you know there was a guy that had a cart that he would load his canoe on and then just wheel it over to the next you know lake along the portage route. <laughs> hey, that's really cool, you know, but me being cheap rather than buying one, I can build one, you know, out of old pieces of metal and a couple of old bicycle wheels. And in fact, that's what I did. And we tried it out um, later on and it seemed to work pretty well. So I planned out this trip for Algonquin, which is a provincial park that's uh, east of Lake Huron um, in Ontario. And so we went up there and got a few slides of the Algonquin trip. Okay, and here is the start of it. Okay, so I had planned out this trip based on, you know, the portages. We we're going to use this cart with my canoe. And because we could put the canoe on a cart and wheel it, we could take a little bit of extra stuff, <laughs> okay? So, classy example of carrying too much stuff on a trail. We really overdid it. Um, but, you know, here, here is the lake at the western access point, and gosh, a nice path down to the lake, you know, and, and the other mistake was I didn't talk to the ranger about, you know, the details of exactly what we were doing on our trip. But here at the beginning, it looked really good. And we had an eight-day trip plan, you know, doing a circuit through the lakes and streams in Algonquin. Um, here's the canoe at, at the first lake. Um, well, not very much. Next to the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there wasn't uh, a cubic centimeter for air to circulate between the two seats, in the front and back. We had a lot of stuff. So, you know, and that's in addition to an 80-pound canoe. So, 
Um, so I have that cart, and, and you'll see that in another slide. And another thing was um, because we had heard about the fishing up here, lake trout in some of these lakes. You know, we were planning, we were counting on catching fish, and uh, Brad was in charge of planning the food and said, "Well, we're going to be catching fish and uh, <laughs> eating some of our." calories from, from what we catch, so I don't need to take as much food. You know, we'll be fine because we're taking fishing equipment and we'll catch things. What is all that food? <laughs> oh, it gets so, better. <laughs> there's a table and, and, and uh, all kinds of you know, cooler. Um, this was uh, late or early fall. And of course, at that time of year, I've got a lot of tomatoes. So we had about 10 pounds of tomatoes <laughs> that we took. Um, but there's the cart. And I don't know at what stage of the trip that I took this, but you can see it's already bent a little bit. <laughs> so, um, but that wasn't the real problem. Um, we had a couple of portages every day along the trip. And at the beginning, they were pretty easy, and we were using the cart, and, and uh, it was working out pretty good, you know. Hey, hey, this is a great plan, you know, this is all going fine. And uh, these portages are easy with this cart. Um, here's another picture of, of being all loaded up. We, we just left the cart assembled and, and laid it over the top of the stuff. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of portages. <laughs> so, but they, you know, and, and some beautiful, bad portage. <laughs> beautiful scenery. This was the kind of stuff we had to portage around sometimes. Um, but uh, if you're getting the idea that this is kind of rugged territory, yeah. Um, There's not little stones in the trail, it's big boulders. Um, and another problem was some of the time the oh, yeah. portages <laughs> were boardwalks and you can see that didn't really work with the cart. <laughs> and that's me standing there with a frown on my face. <laughs> what are we going to do now? <laughs> so typically when we would come to these difficult portages and after we got a little ways into the park they were all difficult. Um, nice smooth paths too I see. It came down, yeah, nice smooth paths. Yeah. <laughs> um, it came down to, we had so much stuff that, well, one a trip was going to be with the canoe. And then usually it was two trips to carry all of our junk <laughs> because we had loaded backpacks in addition to all this other stuff. Um, so if you look at the base of the tree there, there's a yellow thing just to the right of the base of that tree. Yeah. That, dear friends, <laughs> was something to help us with our fishing on the lake. That is an, about a 20 pound anchor, which everybody should take when they go. <laughs> we had, Brad's idea was we would be out jigging for lake trout with his foolproof way to catch lake trout in lakes. And you have to be stationary to do that. So we had to take an anchor with us. So we had a 20 pound anchor. Well, actually the story is we had two 20 pound <laughs> anchors. And early on when we realized how difficult these portages were gonna be, we said, we gotta do something about the anchors. So we, we wisely decided, you know, well, we'll be coming near this point when we return. We'll dump an anchor and, and, and because somebody might take it, you know, <laughs> we'll hide it under the brush. <laughs> so we stashed one anchor, but we took the other one. <laughs> And, and soon got into, you know, we, I think it was the third day we had the portage from hell. There was about a mile on the map. Mm -hmm. I think it was longer with all the winding trail, the boulders, you know, the enormous boulders we had to get our canoe around. 
Um, and we had to do that three times. So we spent all day long doing a portage. <laughs> and at that point, we started looking at the map going, well, what options do we have here? Because we, we are not going to be able to make this entire loop that we were planning. And fortunately, I was able to figure out a shorter cut at one point where we cut some uh, distance off of our trip. So that was good. We still had eight days in which it was like uh, being at boot camp. We were working our butts off all day long. You know, the canoe, the portages took us three times as much time or, or more longer than they should have. And being loaded down to the gunwales with that canoe, when we paddle across a lake, it took a long time, especially when you're out in the wind. It was a lot of work. <laughs> um, one of the interesting events we had was we, we uh, walked this portage. We were canoeing down, the, down this river and came to a place where there were portage and looked on the map and it wasn't clear that there was a waterfall there. So we weren't sure why there was a portage. And as we walked it, we were up above the stream and could see that there was some rapids down there. But that's no obstacle. We'll just float the canoe down. You know, we'll portage our gear so we wouldn't get it wet if we had a problem. Mm -hmm. But we'll just uh, canoe down, and when we get to the rapids, we'll walk through the rapids and, and carry, you know, and, and pull, drag the canoe along with us through the rapids. So we got down to the end and stashed all our stuff and left it there and hiked back and in route there was another couple that was doing their portage, you know, they're carrying their canoe. You know, your canoe's back there. Well, oh, we're making it in two trips. <laughs> three trips. We didn't want to tell them three trips. But, but we had left all of our gear laid out, you know, and then we proceeded to uh, walk the canoe down through the rapids and everything was going just great and all of a sudden there was a rainstorm that came in and just drenched us. And all of our gear was laying out on the ground at the end of the portage. <laughs> you know. But but we had we had stopped and chatted with these people and, and we were trying to off about weight. So hey, you want some fresh tomatoes? <laughs> you know, we're hundred miles from anywhere. And, uh, we gave them some fresh tomatoes which they thought was really great. You know? And um, they had gotten to the end of the portage and saw the rain coming in and you know what they would do would just flip the canoe over and crawl underneath it and wait the rain out. Mm. But they saw our stuff laying there and we had tarps and so they pulled tarps out and covered our gear. Oh, nice. So cool. thankfully they they did us a, a great favor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And and the other interesting event was uh, later on we had done a portage and you know carrying all this stuff um, I got tired of carrying the anchor and at one point I just said drop, you know, right right in the trail. I left an anchor there and, and we had to go back and get something else and and um, I'm on my way back and, and run into another portager who's carrying his kayak over his head. And he goes, you know, he stopped and chatted with us. He goes, Did you see somebody left it? anchor back here. Why would anyone bring an anchor way back here? <laughs> you know, going, it's the stupidest thing we've ever seen. <laughs> uh, so how was the walk through the rapids? Oh, it was no problem. Oh, we, no problem. we were able to do that um, just this plan. Uh -huh. So that worked pretty that worked well. well. And we didn't have to carry the canoe, so <laughs> that was a little bit less work. But Algonquin is a really beautiful place. This was one of the lakes that we uh, paddled across. And Did you catch any fish? We never had time to fish. <laughs> <laughs> we were busting our butts all the time. Never had time to even, you know. <laughs> Where did that food go? Um, not really. <laughs> Brad was rationing out the food and I was grumbling because I didn't feel like I was getting enough to eat. And, uh, we barely made it through our eight days. We were out food at the end.
So. Yeah, if you would have had trout, you would have been all right. We would have been fine. But we were also there in, in fall, and the fishing's not so good down. <laughs> and we were also told that the fishing, you know, had declined in Algonquin quite a bit. People had brought in uh, minnows, chubs for bait, and, and they seemed to be taking over the waters. And, mm -hmm. and we saw a lot of those. So we could have caught minnows and eaten them. <laughs> yeah, you could. Pretend they smell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I went with my buddy up Wawa, and he said they had a lake and they, um, what do you call it, a uh, Ouija board, and so they called it Ouija, and it was just like that there, and we go back at a certain compass setting, and uh, we used daredevils, and pike would come right up to the edge of shore, mm -hmm. and that's all we kept is pike in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So we did go, or I went back and picked up the anchor <laughs> that I had dropped. So we did uh, finish up with both anchors. <laughs> but, were, you, uh, were you shamed at Jeff? <laughs> well, I didn't want to litter. <laughs> so we had not talked with the right people in planning, and we just took away too much stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, there are some areas of uh, Algonquin where there are very nice cart paths. That's not where we chose to go. Mm -hmm. And I did talk to that about that with the ranger when mm -hmm. we checked in. And so mm -hmm. we went to the place where the portages were more rugged. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And found out later that, yeah, had we gone the other way, we had we would have gone to an area where there were nice cart paths and it probably would have worked out much better for us. Mm -hmm. right. We're planning. Mm -hmm. In Sylvania, there's some lakes, you know, most of the lakes, I guess they won't allow any live bait just because they don't want to have happen there or happen there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sylvania is all catch and release as well. Mm -hmm. Did you go, did you take any children? No, that was just Brad and I. Okay, two of you. Because it's those kind of trips that the kids remember the most. <laughs> oh, you do them, whatever they are. The ones that just don't work. Is that your last slide? Yeah. <laughs>